I think most of us can remember uh, our favorite Christmas gift or our favorite birthday gift. It was usually something that we really wanted, and then when we got it, it was something that was just everything we thought it would be. Those are the gifts we remember usually are our favorites. But how about your least favorite? Do you remember your least favorite gift? I can remember mine because it was a pair of boxing gloves when I was four years old. Now, normally that would have been a great gift for a four-year-old, but at the same Christmas, my six-year-old brother also got a pair of boxing gloves. And so my brother, who was two years older than me and who was stronger than me and had a longer reach than me, took advantage of those boxing gloves. Well, why would my parents do such a thing? Why would they give uh, a gift that, for one, would seem at, at first to be such a crummy gift? And the answer is, at least from dad's perspective, he was trying to teach us the fine art of self-defense. He knew that boys, as they were growing up, would have different difficulties, and he felt like his sons needed to know how to handle themselves. Dad was an old Navy man, and, and he was also an old school gentleman from that perspective, and he thought that boys should be able to take care of themselves. And so that gift that at first seemed like a really bad idea to me, after a while, it did teach me some lessons. Now, I have to admit, I got another gift that Christmas that kind of made up for the boxing gloves that my brother and I got, and that was a big punching bag in the shape of Bozo the Clown. And I can remember after my brother would teach me a lesson in self-defense, I would go out to the garage and teach Bozo a lesson or two myself. But think about it. Why, why would your parents want you to learn how to defend yourself? Is it because they wanted you to be a bully? Is it because they wanted to condone violence? And of course, the answer is, if they're good parents, that's not the reason at all. They want you to be able to protect yourself so that you won't get hurt. And also so that you won't be subject to every bully that comes along and wants to push you around. And so we learn to defend ourselves. Self-defense is something that's very critical. Well, there's a passage within the Proverbs that talks about something along those lines. It's found in Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 28. And it says this, Like a city whose walls are broken down is a man who lacks self-control. Well, think about that. This was written during the days of Solomon, about a thousand years before Christ. So this was the time when the cities needed big, strong, tall walls to keep out enemies because enemies were always on the prowl looking for a weaker group of people to take over and take their stuff. And so walls were an absolute critical part of the city's self-defense. But once those walls were torn down, the city no longer had a defense. Or once, even if the walls were still standing, once the gates were open and the enemy could get in, again, the city's self-defense was gone, or at least it was, it was uh, greatly impacted, greatly compromised. The, the nation of Babylon was one of the most powerful nations in the world for several hundred years. Uh, those who saw Babylon said that its walls were so, so wide that several chariots could race together on the top of those walls. And no enemy, no matter how formidable, could penetrate those walls. Babylon finally did fall, though, historians tell us, not because somebody was able to penetrate the walls, but because they decided to go out and meet their enemy outside the city gates. And once they did that, they lost the protection of the walls, and Babylon fell to the Persians and to the Medes. Well, when you think about it, this proverb, this comparison of a man who lacks self-control to a city without walls now takes new meaning. Think about the things that perhaps you have seen others lack self-control in. Uh, a drug addict or an alcoholic just can't say no to the substance. Perhaps they could have it first. They certainly could have the first time they were offered it. but They didn't have the self-control to do that. And then once they felt the addiction taking hold, the self-control started to, to wane even more to the point where they eventually became like a city with its walls broken down. 
and the alcohol or the drugs took over their lives. Other sin is similar to that. Sexual immorality, the man who, who is always going after someone else's wife or someone who's not his wife, uh, that's a man who lacks self-control. He can't control his passions. Some of us had a, a problem with our mouths growing up. I know I did. There were always things that struck me as funny that I thought I should say just right on the spot. <laughs> Sometimes because I said what I thought needed to be said, I, I ended up uh, taking a, getting a nosebleed or two because I couldn't control my mouth. When you think about it, most of God's commandments, the simple things that will help us, don't lie, don't steal, don't commit adultery, all are... All are predicated on the idea of you can control yourself from doing these things. But it's when we lack the self-control that the enemy is able to get into the gate. In this instance, it's Satan. The devil hates us. He's always trying to tempt us to do something wrong. But he can't get at us as long as we have up these walls of self-control. But once you let your guard down... Once you open those gates, well, you become a victim to this enemy. And some people have lost their lives because of it. This is a simple proverb. Let me repeat it again. Like a city whose walls are broken down is a man who lacks self-control. It's a simple pro proverb, but it has a powerful message to, us, to it. For us as parents, if we can train up our children to have self-control... We're going to be te teaching them how to defend themselves in the proper way. But if you're indulgent with your children, or if you're indulgent with yourself and your desires, and, and you allow your self-control or their self-control to be compromised, well, the enemy will be at the gate, and you'll be a victim before you know it. It's a simple message, a simple lesson, but a powerful powerful one. Have you learned the lesson of the proverb, like a city whose walls are broken down is a man who lacks self-control? If you have, I imagine your life is much better for it. But if you haven't, well, today would be a really good day to start learning that lesson. Short lesson today, but a, but a powerful one from the Word of God. I hope it gives you something to think about. Appreciate your tuning in, and we'll see you next time.